Rwanda has high tourism ambitions and in the recent past we've seen millions of investment money flowing into that sector for development. With high investments hopefully comes high returns. But what about the everyday impact these tourist attractions are having on their surrounding communities? It seems as though each new tourist attraction and luxury hotel boasts added value to its locale. But is that really the case? And how does the community contribute to the tourism efforts? Let's find out. My name is Makeda Mahadio and you're watching a CNBC Africa special. For the past few years, Rwanda has found itself becoming a mainstay on tourism recommendation lists from some of the world's biggest media outlets like CN Traveler, National Geographic and New York Times, mostly for its conservation work in preserving the unique endangered mountain gorilla that's only found in this region. But with all of that attention comes responsibility. Responsibility to maintain the ethics and sustainability of the sector. And Rwanda is stepping up to the plate with ambitious revenue sharing efforts. See the benefits um, of the parks and living uh, around or near the parks. Um, and the benefits actually has been shown in so many different ways. Um, since 2005, when the five, when the program started, uh, about more than 640 projects have been invested uh, in. Since the last year, the tourism revenue sharing policy was changed, was changed from 5% up to 10%, whereby more than 586 million were injected in the different social economic projects around this park. So it's, it's so important to report that ha almost half of that envelope was channeled, channeled to the purchase of about 700 to nine cows that were given to different social, uh, to the different locals that are neighboring the park. And this project will serve as tangible, uh, ta tangible conservation incentives around this park because as you know in the context of uh, Rwanda when somebody have a cow even in line to the to the to the government to the, to the government program of one cow per poor family we are making sure, sure that locals are getting manure for their uh, uh, farming activities but they also get milk to feed to, to give to their kids in, uh, as a strategy to combat malnutrition, but also there will be comfort, they will be changing, they will be moving from one cluster to another one because of this cow giving. So their farming activities, their yield will be increasing because they will be adding a manure from those cows as you can see them. Rwanda has managed to make tourist attractions out of the everyday lives and culture of its people, educating visitors on traditional ways of life in the country. Well, actually, I was saying to some other people, I thought it was actually really cool to be able to see them actually getting made, whereas you go to a lot of other places and you're not entirely sure if the arts and crafts were actually made in the store that you're buying, but being able to sit down with the, with the ladies and, uh, and get to know them and watch them watch them make it by hand or the guys carving out the wood has been has been really good and then combine that with the amazing view of the volcanoes and and all of the other cultural things it's been yeah it's been really good today uh, joining us as a guardian the neighborhood has changed a lot because it was come here they pay money and then we keep our money at our account, bank account, at the end of the month, give them their money. Nowadays they have these houses, cows, sheep, goat, they have better for that bring the food poaching. Rwanda has big ambitious goals for its tourism sector and we're seeing investment money flowing in that direction from the construction of new national parks to low-cost domestic flights and other incentives designed to make a tourist experience in the country a bit more enjoyable but are these investments seeing the revenues that they expected to see as we are visiting a tour through this tea plantation in Nyungwe forest we are going to ask those questions uh, there are many tourists visiting this place from across the world. We can receive up to 500 every year. 
we guide and give them information about what we do and offer the best possible services. You see, we are neighbors of this Nyungwe Park, so we get the more visitors of the tourism who come to visit the park and the Immediately they come to plantation, after plantation they come to see how to processing the tea because the first, they, they said it's the first time they know the, they see this tea. It's the reason we are, we are very interested to improve this uh, tea tourism. So we get more visitors than the before. So that uh, when the around 11 or 12 per day, tourism they come and they pay $10 per each so it will come up so that the we get to do interesting, very interesting, very interesting from, the, from this uh, uh, park. But how much of these efforts are going back into the surrounding communities? Is the relationship truly symbiotic? We have the initiative of the community near of our plantation. So we are attracting it to come and we give everything, especially for the, the to helping the schools, everything the schools. This year we give the chairs and the these neighbors' schools, also to give the water to the people, to providing everything is where the farmers are needed, so we're helping to get it. So. As you can see, there is always a win-win. I told you that the higher the park is protected, the higher they can get much more return from the tourism activities. So that the, the, the scheme is, uh, is centered on that, that the hell we get many, tour, many tourists because you have more greater groups. The hell they will get much more money while calculating the 10 percent that is channeled to their social economic development project. We do support infrastructure projects like schools, water tank, health center, as you can see them. We also work on human life conflict projects, but also we work on those small income generating projects like uh, that are farming or off farming activities. Before these activities started, we used to find health services in very distant places of Bigogwe and Kora. But today, such services are close to us. Some of the country's tourism efforts seem to have provided an opportunity for some that didn't exist before, providing training and employment offers for even the most unlikely of sects. When you talk about the cooperative, you talk about the We used to be involved in poaching and other harmful activities to the pack. They later mobilized us to join cooperatives which facilitate revenue sharing programs. They gave us cows and they're extremely important to us. My children can drink milk and I can get manure from these cows. This has remarkably improved our livelihoods. The new conservation approach is to see how to appropriately engage locals in the park conservation so as to make sure that the park is, is, sustainable, is sustainably protected. So what we normally do, uh, it's a, by long background because uh, we started by transforming exporters Towards, for conser towards conservationists as you can see them now. So at the beginning we started by teaching them, telling them uh, the importance of protecting the park, uh, how, how important is the the, 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 the protect, how important is protecting this park in, the term, in terms of being uh, an important ecosystem. So all of ecosystem services related to this park will explain the, to them and then try to teach them how they can alternatively get benefits they used to get from the park in other way, especially based on tourism activities. So we told them that the higher we protected the park, the higher gorillas and other tourism activities are increasing, the higher they can benefit from this park. So as you can see uh, for now, fruits are tangible. You can see uh, we have already given them cows that are coming from the tourism revenue sharing, which is really now a strategy and a tangible tool for us convincing what we theoretically taught them before where now the reality is really visible. 
Uh, actually, uh, the, the students, uh, when you see how the life is better in Poaching, you can suggest to the other people, you can teach the other person how uh, to be guardians, to be conservants, to be better than Poaching. Indeed, much of Rwanda's tourism efforts relates to conservation in some way or another. And this has proven to be a successful model. So you to fetch water, that water, and nowadays, uh, Edwin Sevoro, the founder of his cultural village, brought clean water here. You see how the people here, they come to fetch water here. They can go back to fetch water in the forest and those dirty water. They come here, they have a nice, uh, good water to drink. So that you see how the life is really changing the world uh, for this community around the, uh, the village. Tea and cultural tourism has a big and positive impact on the communities. From tip picking to weaving, people make money from different activities and the factory gains too. Communities greatly benefit from these activities. Through their cooperatives, members receive health insurance, they build houses for themselves, pay school fees for their children and other household basic needs. As a key element of Rwanda's development goals, the tourism sector is continuing to get a lot of attention and in turn a lot of investment money if the country manages to prioritize sustainability and keep involving the community the way it has, this will definitely remain a destination to watch.